Alright, what's up YouTube? I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm gonna strictly summarize Mexico Antiguo. I, I kind of got the, the vibe that a lot of people were not enjoying the story of Gonzalo Guerrero. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna give you the important stuff real quick. And if you guys are interested, you guys can go buy the book, read it, and then you'll know what I know. Because um, there's, a, there's a lot, there's a lot of things in this book that contradict a lot of the history, the cultura I've been learning. But um, I'll allow you to, you know, buy the book if you're interested. And now I'm just going to give you the main points that I liked from the book. And then you can run with that. You can go out of your way, buy it, and, uh, you know, kind of learn for yourself. But on another note, I know I've been out for a while. I've been doing a lot of schoolwork. Um, you know, I, went, I decided to go back to school. I'm currently working. It's a program where... You get your bachelor's and your master's. At this, uh, it's, it's it's a straight road for your master's. So I'm working. I'm technically working towards my master's. Um, and yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been I've been doing a lot of schoolwork, and I've been out of school for a long time. So I need to uh, get in the groove of having to do assignments and do all that all that stuff that you need to do. But let's get started. So the main concept that I wanted to share with you. With Gonzalo Guerrero is that when we see Mexicans that are light skinned with blue eyes or they have red hair, you automatically think, oh, those are not Mexicans. Look at their features. Like, for example, Canelo. Look at his features. In this book, Gonzalo meets a Mayan, or after his being captured, meets a Mayan woman. They have a family. His kids came out with red hair, blue eyes, and they were tan skin. They were not light skinned. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that just because you have blue eyes or you have red hair, if you have indigenous lineage in your bloodline, you're a Mexicano. It, 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 you cannot avoid to not have some Spaniard features in you because they're the one, they're the main, they were the dominant uh, race, the bloodline that created, from, uh, that created genocide. Uh, uh, for the majority of the they were responsible for the majority of the genocide excluding Gonzalo Guerrero and a few others who genuinely fell in love with the indigenous woman so you know and the reason why I bring this up is because I constantly hear people call me like a huero or you're a huero are you sure you're Mexican it's like you guys are not understanding that Mexicans are, are we're mixed with Spaniard and indigenous some people get the stronger side of the Spanish and some people get the stronger side of the indigenous. It just depends on the bloodline, what you get. I got the stronger side of the Spaniard. The rest of my family didn't. And I and and, and I know um I dropped another video or interview with my dad, and you, you can tell the difference. My dad looks very indigenous. I don't, you know? Um so that's one important concept that Gonzalo Guerrero's children or tan skin, blue eyes, and red hair. I want you guys to to really think about that. And those were, were as um, the cultura uh, calls it, the first Mexicans. Now, I know the term Mexican should not be used as the umbrella for all the indigenous tribes because they're not all Mexica. But it's the umbrella that defines the indigenous. I know for some, you're going to be like, oh, that's not correct. Look. I'd rather be called Mexican than Hispanic or Latino because we're not Hispanics and we're not Latinos, okay? If you want to go by the tribe that where your family comes from, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. You can call yourself Anahuaca, Mestizo, uh, Anahuaca Mestizo, Mexicano, Mestizo. Those are fine because we are Mestizos, okay? But we are not the type of Mestizos that embraces the Spaniard uh, lineage. We embrace the indigenous and we embrace ourselves as our own kind. Because we are, we're a hybrid of two bloodlines. Most of us. Now, a lot of Mexicans, that even if they're born in Mexico, they're not Mexican. I want you guys to really understand that. Gonzalo Guerrero was not Mayan. He adopted Mayan customs, but he was a Spaniard. Okay? I want you guys to really understand that because I see that people are having a, a hard time accepting that you are not that. And a lot of people here in the States... Be like, oh, um, 
Where are your grandparents from? Oh, they're from uh, Aguascalientes. That's where they're from. I'm not from there. No, you're you're not from there, but that's where your family comes from. We need to start saying things like that. So when people ask you, hey, you know, uh, you know, uh, where do your family come from? Be like, oh, my family comes from there, but I, I was born here. Don't say that. Just be like, look, my family comes from Michoacan or from Jalisco, because that's where your family comes from. That's where your bloodline comes from. That's where everything is traced back. Now, if you're gonna claim. And I said this in plenty of videos that your family has been here for generations. Then what indigenous tribe are you? Because you're not European and you're not British. If you have a Spaniard last name, you're not European and you're not British or you're not a French. So we need to really figure out, figure that out. Because a lot of people say that because they're ashamed of who they are. And I'm going to say it, they're ashamed of who they are. Oh, my family's been here since the, since. A long time. Okay, fine. What tribe does your family come from? Or what part of England? And, and a lot of the time, they stay quiet because they're not English. And they're not British. And they're not Native American. You know, a lot of times, they're like, well, I don't know that. I'm like, you should know that. If you're going to be claiming something, you should not be able to back it up. I can back up my, my, my lineage. Can you? That's another aspect that, yeah, we're learning cultura. And we're learning, we're learning all these great things, but you also need to understand, am I really that? Most people who call themselves Mexicans are not Mexican. Excuse me. Most of them are, they're Spanish. That resided in Mexico. That does not make you Mexican. So you need to do your homework. You need to find out, okay, where does my family come from? Where did the mestizaje happen? Who is the indigenous woman? And the Spaniard that create that started our bloodline. From both your dad and your mother's side. You got to really know. You have to know this stuff. You know, it's important that we understand. As long as you have indigenous blood and lineage in you, you're a Mexicano. And I know now with a lot of the mixing, inter interracial mixing that's going on. I do not recommend that, guys. Do not do that. Don't do that. M marry within your race. It, you know... You know, I know everybody has their own motives, but I'm from what I viewed, my experience, like my personal opinion is people do it out of being ashamed. They're trying to get away from that Mexican uh, categorization. They're like, oh, you know, I want my kids to be more European. Well, I want to marry a different, you know, Asian race, whatever the case may be. I don't recommend that because then your kids don't have a race. You're stripping them of what I, I, I call the most beautiful part of being a Mexican, which is, the, which is the indigenous bloodline, the rich indigenous culture. You're stripping them away from that by mixing other bloodlines, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, you guys can do whatever you guys want, okay? All right, moving on. So it talks about Chichen Itza. It talks about the steps. You know that what 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 it symbolizes each step. I guess it, it rounds off to three hundred and sixty uh, sixty five days, which is which is the days of the year. Uh, there's a lot of symbolism. It talks about how Chichen Itza got its name. It talks about you know how uh, Gonzalo Guerrero fought the Spaniards along with the Mayans in Chichen Itza. That was that was one of the battles took place in Chichen Itza. Um, there's other stories. I know I've mentioned in some of my previous videos how, you know, the whole thing with Huchilopochtli when the, when the Aztecs left Aslan. When they left Aslan and they were guided by Huchilopochtli. In this book, they claim that Huchilopochtli was an old man. He wasn't a spirit. He was just someone that wanted to get out of Aslan. I don't remember the details. But I do have an idea. So just bear with me, please. If you guys want the details, please just get the book and it'll, it'll tell you everything. But they left Aslan. You know, we're taught that some divine spirit came to this indigenous people and guided them south. This book claims that it was not the case. That was just an old man who wanted to get out. So as they're marching, they follow what they call the sun. They're going to follow the sun. And, they, and the sun's name at that time was Meshi. As I've mentioned in many videos, that's where we get the name Mexica. So they went from Aztecs, because they were in Aslan, to Mexica, because they were following Meshi, the sun. So as they go on, on, this, on this journey... You know, uh, they're looking for a sign, you know, and, and, and from what I remember, that sign is, it, um, they were pretty much lost in what sign it is that they were looking for, but they were looking for a sign. It's not too clear as to what the eagle and the serpent, if that was a sign that 
they were looking for. Because I know another illustration that was the sign that was given to them. In this book, it wasn't the case. It was more like uh, someone, as they were walking and they were looking for the sign, you know, uh, they came to this the swamp. That's initially where Mexico was built upon a swamp. And one of the, the tribe, tribesmen that was with them saw the eagle on the cactus with the serpent. Not everybody saw it, according to the textbook. And he just, and I guess he seen it, it flew away. And he went and told everybody else, hey, I seen the eagle. I seen it. It's real. We got to build Tenochtitlan here. So that's how it went about it here. I don't know how congruent this book is. But it's just, to, uh, it's just to show you guys how everybody has their own interpretation regarding cultura. Not everybody's concrete. There's not like a written in stone. This is what happened. Everyone's just speculating. Everybody's trying to get the story. And the best thing to do, guys, is to get different perspectives from different people. Because I believe there's truth in everything. I'm not saying I fully agree. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept it. I'm going to accept it for what it is. And... You know, uh, that's it. That's really it. But, uh, you know, uh, other than that, guys, I'm gonna, what I'm going to be doing, I have a lot of notes that I've taken over the years regarding El, el Tolte Cayotl. I'm going to go through my notes and I'm going to start dropping videos and I'm uh, on my notes so that I can teach you everything that I've gathered so that you guys understand more of like the, I call it the religious aspect of the indigenous or indigenous lineage. So you guys understand them more. So that we get out of this mindset that, oh, the, the, the gods and the, the, oh, those are gods. It's like, no, like we got to understand some people name Tlaloc a god. Some people don't. Tlaloc simply represents the water and what, and what are, are human beings composed of? Water. We have 70% water. I spoke about this in my previous videos. Huisilopochtli. A lot of people, you know, the god of war, the god of sacrifices. Other people is uh, a symbolism for your heart. Because the, the, the hummingbird doesn't start flapping his wings and your heart never stops working. It's just, there's a lot of symbolism. It just depends on what you want to accept. You know, the same thing with Quetzalcoatl. I, I was taught that it was a demon. Quetzalcoatl is it's just the balance between the spiritual and the materialistic. Okay? But then again, everyone has their own interpretations. Okay? So, with this being said, Gonzalo Guerrero, his kids had... Red hair, blue eyes, and tan skin. He fought with the Mayans and Chichen Itza against the Spaniards. He was not a Mayan. He was a Spaniard. I want you guys to understand this. It's all about the bloodline. If people ask you, oh, where are you from? Yeah, you can say, well, I'm from here, from so. Well, what's your bloodline? Oh, I'm this. I'm, uh, a lot of people say I'm an American. American is not a race, guys. It's not a race. People in South of America are Americans. We are Americans. That word got really misused. People in South of America are Americans too. That's why it's called South of America, North of America. It's not a race and it's not a bloodline. We have to understand that. If you're not European, if you're not European, British, if you're not French or anything like that, you're not, you're not, you're not white. Even if you were born here, that doesn't make you part of them. Now, if you're going to go and marry white folks or, you know, white women... Then your children are going to start becoming more on that side because we already have that Spaniard. Okay? But if you don't have, if, if you're Mexican, and just because you're born here, like, well, I'm an American, I'm not Mexican anymore. That's not correct. Being born in Mexico does not make you Mexican. It's your bloodline. If you have indigenous bloodline and Spaniard, you're a Mexican. It's not a matter of birth, it's a matter of your bloodline. And I want you guys to understand that. I've seen a show on YouTube. Um, well, they, you know, and it's not to discredit the Chicano movement. There's a lot of good too, but then I'm going to talk about what I don't agree. This guy, they asked him, so are you Mexican? He's like, no, we're not Mexican because I wasn't born there. We're Chicanos. We're American. Um, I'm sorry, dude. American's not a race. People in South of America are Americans too. Okay? Look at your bloodline. Just because you're not born in Mexico does not say that you're not, that you're not Mexican. Mexican is a bloodline. And what is that bloodline? The example is Gonzalo Guerrero and the Mayan woman. And his children are Mexicans. Ideally, that's not the correct term. But it's the umbrella for all the, indig for all the Mexican people that have indigenous uh, lineage in them. That's what that is. Okay, not everybody's Mexican. Not everybody. Because you're born there. Does not, if a, your Caucasian family goes to Mexico and, and they have children there, they're not Mexican. 
Please understand that. If you go with your Mexican family to Europe or England and you're born over there, you're not English. You have nationality. But that's not you. If I go and have a family in, in China, my kids are not Chinese. They have nationality. We need to understand this. Okay? We need to accept who we are and stop being ashamed of who we are. We need to embrace in our cultura and just live through it. Okay? That's all I got for this video. I'm going to be dropping more, guys. So just bear with me. I'm going to really have to uh, get to it. But other than that, guys, take care and God bless.